My name is Bonina Montez, part of Burroughs Family Orchards, and we are located in Merced County. So Burroughs Family Orchards is a partnership between myself and my parents, Warden Rosie Burroughs. We farm about 1,200 acres, and we have 150 of walnuts, and then about 10 acres of olives, and the rest are all almonds. Everything that we have is certified organic. In the Central Valley of California, it's a Mediterranean climate, which is why it is so unique and grows so many acres of almonds. So the bulk of our production is sold as bulk truckloads, and we have developed a brand as Burroughs Family Farms, where we do packaged almonds, we do almond butter, and we also get certified by the California Olive Oil Council as extra virgin. The practices that we utilize on the farm now are keeping the soil covered as much as we can, which means that we have a lot of vegetation and that creates an issue. How are you gonna manage that? We previously would mow the middles and then we added side mowers and we'll flame to get ready for harvest. But the biggest thing that we've, we're now incorporating are sheep, uh, sheep grazing from late fall when we get the rains into mid spring. We wanna make sure that we're taking care of uh, food safety as well. So getting off before we're harvesting 90 to 120 days. We refer to things as weeds, but for us now, it's, it's more of a grass. We're utilizing it for the sheep, which is beneficial for the soils. And then we have a product that we're able to turn around and sell back later on too, in the lambs that we're, we're raising. So I say we'd start in the rainy season. So after we would finish our normal harvest, then whenever the rains do come and we start getting the grass growing, we've got to get it up enough for the sheep to be able to utilize it. And then we would start with our sheep grazing. So that would be as early as November through all the way into May, which is six months out of the year. We're using the sheep to really help control the grass and the weeds to our advantage. After that, once the rain stops in May, we're gonna to go to more relying on our irrigation, which is a dual line drip, which really condenses your water to the roots on the tree. So that's where we would start coming in and, and mowing to start breaking down the old material. Realistically, we only have about two seasons here for weed control. We have the time of the year where we want the grass, and then we only have about a four month period where we have to get rid of it and then shake, sweep, and pick up our almonds and then we're looking for grass again. So the main thing that we use are mowers and that's what we used the most over the past, you know, 10 plus years. Even that has evolved though, because we used to use a weed badger, which was just one pass along the tree row. And then we had to come back with a flail mower for the middles. And we have to make two passes because of the size. Um, so that ended up being four passes with the machinery that we had at the time. Now we use a side mower that is part of the tractor and the flail mower. So now we only have to do two passes, but by utilizing the sheep, the material that's left is much less. And so it's less for us to mow. So that's been a positive as we've evolved. We don't necessarily have one specific weed that we have to address because it's more of the whole orchard floor that we manage. It's the volume that we have to address. If we can keep the volume down throughout the year, yeah. that's where we, it benefits us in the, in the harvesting side. And that's where the sheep have come in where we're not having to mow fields and we're, we're reducing that volume overall going into it. So instead of having to go in and mow something that could be three feet high and very heavy, we're only coming in and having to mow something that's possibly less than six inches. They just, they do a pretty good job, especially when there's no nettle. I mean, it almost looks like it's a couple days after the floor has been mowed. It's pretty uniform. And as long as you get your stocking rate set to where it's manageable, then you're pretty set up. What works for us on our farm is about five acres. And with the size of the flock, with the five acres, we are on kind of a rotation of every other day. So we set up fencing and then we'll move them you know, set up the next one and then move them the next day. But the sheep come with their own challenges. Do we keep ewes that are gonna lamb? Um, when do we lamb? You know, we're trying now to utilize them the best way we can. So we're hoping to move to a lambing in October so that as 
the sh as the lambs drink less milk, they'll have the right timing to be utilizing the orchard grasses to put on weight and get ready. And then as we get out of the season of in the orchards, we don't have to have such high quality feed for the ewes that are not lactating. So we came to check out the vegetation that's here in this orchard. And as you can see, there's just what I, I wouldn't consider this a really weedy uh, orchard floor. We have a lot of orchard grass, we have fillery. Um, there is some stinging metal out here, but in general, it just looks like beautiful lush pasture that the sheep can utilize efficiently. Makes me happy. And as far as our weed control goes, this is one of our flamer setups, we call them. It's kind of based off the principle of a, of a traditional weed sprayer. We just took a propane tank, put it on a trailer, made, a, made some booms for it. And there's a couple of hydraulic controls here that run off the back of a tractor that allow us to, to move the, the flamers up and down depending upon the topography we have. Um, we have a couple of controllers up here with some solenoids that turn it on and off, which feed up to the tractor so the operator can turn things on and off as needed. Later in the year, when we're getting ready to get prepared for harvest, we go through and we'll go underneath the trees and we will flame the strips to suppress any leftover grass that we weren't able to utilize with the sheep. Well, they were flaming before I came here. And I think that was one of the issues is when you are harvesting, you have to be able to clean out underneath the tree row, all your nuts out underneath. And the cleaner you can have that strip just underneath the tree, it makes it that much easier and more efficient for the sweepers to get through there. And then it's just that much less material that is going through the harvester, which could potentially damage the product too. And that's why, again, why we have the irrigation up in the trees also, because you can't put that kind of heat on plastic irrigation drip tubing. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. So we only flame about June, July, and August. And by the first part of August, some of our early varieties were already starting to harvest. So it's only about a three month period now where we actually do any flaming. We try to do as little as possible. I feel like we've done a pretty good job of thinking outside the box, coming up with tools that are not conventional or not the norm in almond farming that were doable on a large scale, but that still could make economic sense. I mean, I like to think of it with a three-legged peg that, you know, you gotta take care of your environment and you gotta take care of your community, which is the people, and it has to make sense economically because if one of those is off kilter, it's not gonna work. If we don't have a good team, um, you know, we can't get the work done, it's not gonna work. If we're not getting, you can have the loftiest ideas in the world and have the greatest plan, but if you don't get paid for it, you're not gonna be able to be able to do it. So. To me, it's, it's all three parts.